Good morning. I guess it's still morning here on Monday morning. It is the Atlanta Inquirer podcast live on our YouTube channel. Thanks to all of you for joining us. It is Jeremy Warner and Derek Piper. Derek, of course, it is portal season. It is carousel season, so we have plenty to talk about today. We'll talk about the Chester Frazier rumors uh, about him going to West Virginia uh, and what Illinois could do to fill that spot. We will talk about Sincere Harris entering the transfer portal, and we'll talk about Kylan Boswell committing to Illinois. Jason Shear, who covers Arizona for 24-7 sports at wildcatauthority.com. He's going to join us in about 15, 20 minutes here to give us his thoughts on Kylan Boswell coming back home to Champaign, what he saw from Kylan at Arizona. Uh, and we'll talk about the other official visitors for Illinois in the transfer portal this weekend. That includes Kerry Booth at Notre Dame, uh, and he's headed to Colorado State right now, and Dante Maddox, who starts an official visit. Uh, Derek has a great official visit primer up at IlanaInquire.com that you can check out. But before we get to that, Derek, did you actually have a weekend? Uh, between all of this stuff, were you able to do anything with the family this weekend? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. It was a busy uh, weekend on the family side. My uncle was in town from San Diego, so uh, we went out and played a little golf, me, him, and my brother. And then uh, my dad turned 60, so we celebrated that yesterday. So Congratulations, uh, Papa Piper, yeah. Yeah, man, that's a big one. So uh, a little bit of a, a breather uh, on that side, but yeah, stuff happening all throughout the weekend and diving right back into it today. So it, it continues. Yeah, it's it's nicer to kind of be home and be able to do the family stuff while we are attached to our phones and laptops and all that. Got to a daddy daughter dance on Friday night, Piper. You got those to look forward to. They are fun. Uh, and uh, got to the park yesterday. Got to do some of those things. And the whole family sat down and watched Bluey the Sign, which I uh, <laughs> recommend to everybody as I wrote in my seven thoughts uh, this weekend. But let's get to it, Derek. Kyle Boswell. I don't think it's right uh, at this moment to talk about a Diddy song, but he's coming home. He's coming home uh, back to Champaign-Urbana, the Urbana Middle School legend Kyle Boswell after two years at Arizona. We talked about the possibility last week, Derek, but what does it mean for Illinois to get the former five-star prospect and proven high major starter at point guard? It's a big deal, and you have a point guard this year. You know that for sure. Uh, obviously, Marcus Damas – Ease that transition, and, and Illinois had a fantastic offense without one last year. But Kylan's a, a big time talent, a guy that still we've emphasized it here recently is young for his class. I mean, going in to his junior year, he's going to be 19 years old, same age that Trent Frazier was when he was a freshman. A lot of freshmen in that 18, 19 range. Kylan now having two years of high major experience under his belt, started pretty much every game this past year at Arizona, a team that was a two seed. So inconsistencies in his last season, uh, operating at point guard a little bit more. Now he has shown that he can play both on and off the ball, and he shot it exceptionally well from three. I mean, 38% from deep in his career so far at Arizona, uh, a good catch-and-shoot guy, a guy that can play in transition, a guy that's very physically strong. I mean, you see the way that he's built. He's He's got big, big thighs and big arms, and I think Illinois will try to lean him up a little bit, try to get him a little bit more quick and – as far as laterally explosive at the rim, if you look at his analytics, some things that he struggled with is finishing at the basket. Uh, I think that if he can do a little bit more to, to get off the ground, some uh, that that will help him there, but uh, has played in, in pick and rolls. He's been inconsistent there. Like as far as, and that's kind of a, a storyline that will go along with uh, who he was at Arizona. I'm sure we're going to hear that from Jason Shear is that his high points were really, really good. Like early this season when they played at Duke and they beat him, Kylan looked like one of the best, you know, five, definitely 10 best point guards in the country. In, in the meat of Pac-12 play, he really had some uh, some down games, especially as he finished out this past season. I think he only scored in double figures once in his final six games. So it uh, does need to, to tap into his overall potential. But Illinois having the relationship built there from the high school recruitment, having the, the pull back to Champaign, he's got family on both sides of his parents that are still here in the Champaign-Urbana area. So – I think it was more so, and as it played out, whether or not he was going to go in the portal, that was really, as they evaluated, I had heard that they were thinking a lot about Illinois as he was making that decision. I do think that a fresh start was going to be good for him. Uh, he took a lot of criticism for his, his up and down play at Arizona, and he has some things that he does need to just straighten out and, and, and mature and, and everything like that. But I think it's a, a great ad, makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think that he can be a good defender. Uh, he's shown that he, he – is very competitive at that end, is strong, and uh, just really brings a lot of intensity on the ball there too. So 
you see the rankings. I mean, top 20 get in the, in the portal on 24-7 as of now, top five point guard. That's a that's a huge one for Illinois, and they worked very uh, persistently to get that done as soon as he went in the portal. Yeah, I would expect, Eric, this is going to be one of their two biggest gets in, in the transfer portal this offseason. It could be th- their biggest one. And uh, I, I've said it before, but – He's turning 19 this week, and he's going to be a junior. There, there is still upside here. There is still maturity that needs to happen, but I think is going to happen. And, and getting to Illinois, a place where they've developed well, and a place where he's going to, I mean, frankly, be given the keys to, to this offense and really to the head of this defense as well. And while Illinois was able to do this last year without a point guard, uh, I just think finding another Marcus Damask is really unlikely. Like you – you hit a home run with that one, maybe an ex- unexpected grand slam. They knew he'd be good, but not this good. And the fact that he could handle those point guard duties, I just don't see another guy being able to do that. So to get a more of a traditional league guard, a guy who's been a part of winning at the USA basketball level, pro, uh, obviously his prep career at Compass Prep, and then at Arizona, like I know it was up and down a little bit this past year, but he was a part of them getting to a number two seed. uh, And he just has the makeup, Derek, where he can lead an offense, two to one assist to turnover ratio, as you said, a really good shooter. And then he's a a really above average to good defender on the ball. Like there's just some of the things that this team wasn't missing a lot, but they were missing that kind of of player at some times. And he's a guy I think other people are going to want to play with. And that'll be seen whether Dante Maddox wants to do it, but those guys can play together. Uh, if they want to go after AJ store of a wing of that level or Trey white, right? Like those guys can all play together and he can facilitate a lot of things on both ends of the court. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, if they find a alpha score on the wing, it doesn't take away from, you know, Kylan has to be in a ball screen, every possession for him to be effective. It, that wasn't who he was at Arizona playing alongside Caleb love, who we know is a high usage player and, and Arizona, got a a really, really good version of him. He was a third team all American, if I'm not mistaken. And then the previous year, Kylan coming off the bench, playing alongside Courtney Ramey. And so he's shown that off the ball, he can be really effective too. And I think that especially as he's getting into being an upperclassman, his abilities in the pick and roll, I think that he will get more consistent. I think he will be able to facilitate a lot of offense. And I'm sure that Illinois likes the idea. I think they will get back to more, more ball screen uh, dominant in terms of just their, their scheme offensively. We'll see how the rest of the pieces come along. But I think whether we've, we've talked about AJ store, we've talked about uh, if it would be someone different uh, as far as that, that wing, you know, Boswell. And if they were to get Maddox, those are two lights out shooters. I mean, Maddox at another level uh, is a, just a prolific catch and shoot guy, but Boswell can do it as well. And, and yeah, I think that just the the physicality and competitiveness and on the ball uh, defensively is something that Illinois really didn't have a lot of last year and uh, is a true guard to, to defend those point guards. You know, Ty Rogers got put in those positions, obviously struggled some uh, getting through screens. I think Boswell, I know I was talking to Isaac Trotter, uh, our national guy and said, you know, he, it should be a, a real seamless fit defensively, assuming if Illinois still likes to play that drop coverage, that's what he did at Arizona, having to fight through screens and, and get back in front. And he's someone that will get out and and transition with some steals. And that's another thing that I really like about him is that coming from an offense at Arizona that loved to play fast, loved to get out and transition. And we know that Brad wants to do that here as well. So I just think it makes a ton of sense. And one thing I want to add is I had heard if this thing was really going to open up, you know, Kylan got calls from Alabama, Baylor, Creighton, Texas. Like there were a lot of programs that had high, a high degree of interest or just wanted to see where that one was at. Because, you know, he's a former five-star prospect and is a guy that was on the USA Basketball Junior National Team. So this wasn't like, hey, you know, he, he was just dangled out there and Illinois scooped him up. Like He could have had a big-time recruitment if he wanted to. All right. Speaking of these other transfers that Illinois has hosted, Kerry Booth wrapped up his official visit, the six foot ten, slight 205-pound a stretch forward uh, with really tantalizing upside can can shoot it didn't shoot at the highest percentages uh, 18 year old freshman here Derek but obviously Illinois really intrigued by what he can bring with his athleticism skill set and youth uh, he's also on his way to Colorado State though for an official visit that has been a very good program and obviously close to his father Calvin Booth who's the general manager of the Denver Nuggets what do you think of where the Illini stand after their official visit 
Sounds like they like their position going into the, the visit. They worked it hard and really made a decision to prioritize him, had a zoom during the week of the final four and made it clear that the feedback they heard. And as they dug into it and, and saw the upside and, and what they think he can be, they've seen some similarities between his skill set and what Coleman Hawkins was here at Illinois. And I, I think that through his prep career and leading up to it, probably more of an established outside shooter. I know that the numbers don't necessarily say that uh, this past year at, at Notre Dame than, than Coleman was. Coleman probably more of that playmaker and, and almost like a point forward type, not saying that, that Kerry can't make some decisions and passes and play some offense through him on the perimeter, because I think you can, but that's something that maybe you have to try to develop and tap into a little bit more. You see in his highlights, I know we've we've broken it down a little bit. Like he can finish above the rim, like a, a nice – straight line driver. It's a pretty good athlete at 6'10", good length. And um, going to Colorado State, it's close. It's an hour from where he lives there in, in Colorado. And like you said, could be there uh, by his dad as the GM of the Nuggets. But uh, I think that Illinois, as soon as Alabama wasn't a big player for him, they it, it seemed like that was going to be a big challenger and uh, their main competition, but they didn't push for a visit. And I think that it, it seems like these are going to be the only two visits for Calvin, or I should say for Kerry. Uh, and then he'll make a decision. So I, I like where Illinois sits as of right now. Yeah, I do too. The, the thing I would say with if, if Kerry Booth does commit to Illinois is patience is required. Uh, he is right. he is raw. Uh, he is not – like he to me, he's not ready to be Coleman Hawkins. Like So if that's your expectation, you're probably going to be disappointed next year just because, as Michael Tuop has said, he's still like a fawn out there. You can tell he's still trying to figure this all out, and that's kind of how Coleman looked as a freshman and sophomore at times, right? So I, I, I Coleman's value – is probably going to be realized a little bit even more by fans next year. Not that Illinois fans don't understand his value, but it's just that playmaking, the the IQ he had, uh, it's not going to be there right away in a guy like Kerry Booth. But the th some of the things I think Quincy Garrier offered of stretching the floor, straight line drive, can finish at the rim, even though Quincy wasn't consistent at that, he's just not as physically impressive and, and physically ready to handle the Big Ten, I think, is Kerry Booth. But he is a guy that, that has experience. Uh, Dante Maddox Jr. is starting his official visit to campus today, Derek. He uh, left Louisville without a commitment, which is important for Illinois. What do you make of this recruitment going into the official? They really want him. They want him really bad. He's become a big priority for them. And it's it's not hard to see if you watch – if you look at the numbers, if you watch his highlights there on YouTube, but just a big-time, big-time shooter. Great range. Catch and shoot is, is really up there in the elite of college basketball. I know – uh, I was running the numbers for the story I wrote, 55% on open catch and shoots. I mean, that's just almost automatic. So somebody that as a junior at Toledo played kind of Robin to Ray J. Dennis's Batman uh, as the point guard, and he was more of that off guard this year, took on a point guard role for Toledo, probably not a pure point guard at this level. I think he's a combo. I think he's a guy, though, that can do some things on the ball. He's uh, graded out pretty well in pick and rolls. Uh, he could push it in transition. And that's where I think Illinois, they love the fit that he can make with Kylan because both guys have that ability to, to be effective on and off the ball, both being shooters, both being guys that have come from programs that play fast. And defensively, his metrics are pretty good this past year. I know that Mike Latulip has talked about his wingspan. I mean, he's got long arms at six foot two, so can play bigger than his size. He's someone that has a, a really high basketball IQ. Uh, I give some of that credit, I would imagine, and talking to some people that – you know, his dad, Dante Maddox Sr., has been the head coach at uh, Bloom Township since 2015. So uh, son of a coach, he kind of plays like it. Uh, defensively, good instincts, can uh, get in passing lanes and, and create some steals and, and make some things happen there. Uh, Louisville has been really aggressive. Uh, their NIL bag sounds like is, is pretty big and Pat Kelsey's first year there. Uh, they want to get back on track. So they got like two guys they got to add to the roster. Like, yeah, <laughs> they they have like two players on their roster. Right. So I, I don't know what the difference is between what Illinois has on the table versus Louisville as far as that goes. But I know that Illinois is trying to really emphasize winning because this is his last go in college. He did make the tournament at Cal State Fullerton his sophomore year. Uh, it was a, a one and one and out. They were a 15 seed, but uh, trying to see if he'll really buy into coming home, being part of a team that can go on a deep run and, and just the way they, they can develop him and utilize him uh, alongside Kylan. I, I think they they really like how that would look for him. Well, and we talked about it, Derek, the, the top need this offseason was shooting. And in Boswell, proven shooter. In Maddox, obviously 40 plus percent three point shooter. And some of those aren't like high percentage looks. Like he's creating his own off the move. Jake Davis, 
a 38% three-point shooter as a freshman at the Division One level. Uh, Luke Goody, uh, obviously part of this, but on a team that's got Ty Rogers and I think wants Ty Rogers to play a big role, on a team that's going to have Merez Johnson playing a big role, it's important to have shooters like that. And if you have, if you have Boswell and uh, Maddox in the same backcourt, maybe Dre Gibbs Lawhorn behind them, that's that's potentially one of the best backcourts in the Big Ten. I think so, for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, potential there still to tap into, obviously, with DGL and uh, Kylan uh, going into this year as a, as a 19-year-old. And you do you would have that veteran presence, which would be nice, and, and Dante as well. So uh, I really like how that would look. Obviously, we'll see how some of the other dominoes uh, fall here. I mean, Michigan, if they get John L. Davis, and that that's, could be a really good backcourt as well. Uh, but as far as, yeah, being up there in the top tier of the Big Ten, there's no doubt I agree with that. I'd I think that Illinois would expect that the Kerry Booth is a, at least a very capable shooter this year. If they were to get him, he's another guy that would create that floor spacing, which really, if you get that at guard and you have it at some other positions as well, open up the floor. And as we sh- saw this past year, while you won't have a Terrence Shannon, while you won't have a Marcus Damas, assuming he's not going to get a six year, uh, you could have a very efficient offense and can make it really hard for defenders uh, to approach that because there's just so much gravity on the on the perimeter. All right, we'll get Jason Shear from uh, Arizona 24-7 Sports coming up here very shortly. But, Derek, Sincere Harris enters the transfer portal. Uh, it's kind of been an up and down uh, last couple of weeks of will he, won't he. But obviously with the, with the rumors and the expectation, it's going to happen. Chester Frazier uh, going to West Virginia here. We'll talk about that and the potential opening here for Illinois in a second. But Illinois has been recruiting over him. They, they, they want more offense. But this is a guy that had – the fan base behind him, right? How could you not with the intensity and the effort he played with? But once he redshirted, I know you and I were like, that. It, it, the odds of him coming back seem very unlikely. For sure. No, and those around the program kind of got that vibe as well. They were very much wondering, because it, it was a shock for him to decide to redshirt at that time. It was after the Kansas exhibition that he went to the coaching staff and said, hey, I'm not going to play the role I want. Don't want to burn a year of eligibility. And they, they understood it from his standpoint as, as far as you, you've got to be sensitive with with how many years you have and, and what and maximizing those. And they did like what they saw from him on the practice court. Now, I know that we've had discussions before, like Austin Hutcherson, some guys can really uh, showcase themselves. I know Sincere put out that video of, of him uh, doing a little bit more offensively. I can only imagine how many shots he got up on the scout team. Uh, but yeah, I, admittedly, from my standpoint, even before the Chester talk and news surfaced, like I was skeptical of of sincere being 100 percent locked in on Illinois. I felt like if they added some other pieces in the backcourt, which is their full on intention, that he might then say, I want to go get a bigger role somewhere else. But with Chester being out of the fold, it, it makes all the sense in the world for him to, to exit as well. So really, really good defender more of a specialty player at nat- at this point, as we've talked about in the past, if he does add more of a capability to shoot, then obviously he can, he can be a nice piece and, and maybe even a potential starter somewhere uh, down the road in, in his career. But uh, I, I don't know that he wanted to just be that. Maybe, he, maybe you need that spark on defense one night. Maybe you don't and you need more shooting another night and he doesn't play that much. I think he wanted more of a consistent role and it was going to be hard to even, guarantee that Illinois was not guaranteeing that even going into this year after the red shirt. Yeah. Well, well said. Oh, we'll talk more about that here coming up. We'll get some of your questions coming up. If you want to send those in super chats, all that, we always appreciate that. One of the great parts about working with 24 seven sports is our vast network of experts across the country. And right now we're happy to join, uh, to have one of them join us And Jason Shear, wildcat authority. The Arizona site does a great job running that site. Jason, thanks for joining us, man. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Well, let's talk, let's talk about the positive of Kylan Boswell first before we talk about some of the the struggles and of consistency here a little bit. But when Kylan Boswell was good for a number two seed in Arizona in the NCAA tournament, what did he bring to the court? Yeah, I mean, when, when Kylan Boswell's good, he's up there with anyone. I, I always refer back to the the Duke game earlier in the season where there's a a ton of NBA talent. He was the best player on the court. I mean, he had 12, 8, and 5, didn't turn the ball over. It was really good. Uh, when, when things are going well, his jump shot's hitting. He can create for himself. He doesn't turn the ball over. He's running the offense. I mean, he, he you know, Arizona, before the season, basically they, they had Kerr Creesa, and they basically said, look, Kerr, like, this is Kylan's team now, and, and you should probably look elsewhere. And, 
uh, they gave the keys to Kylan Boswell, and they did that because of the confidence they have in him. And, you know, you saw in the NCAA tournament against Long Beach State, he was really good. He was aggressive. That is the uh, the good Kylan Boswell. And, um, you know, when he plays well, he, he can play against anyone and, and do so effectively. He's still young. He turns 19 this week. And I never love when guards enroll early. It just, I don't feel like it's a, it's a good thing for them. But he enrolled early, played for Arizona last year, but this year becomes a starter. We still saw some inconsistency. So when he was inconsistent, he wasn't good, Kylan Boswell. What were his struggles at Arizona? The, the biggest issue with Kylan, I think, is when, when you look at the games that he played, you could tell right away how he was going to play. And, and the coaching staff worked with him. If his first few shots don't go in, uh, it impacts him mentally. Like he will at times stop shooting. Um, you know, the, there was a game at even at Oregon where his first few shots didn't go in. He has a shot where he's up for a wide open three and he passes it in the air. Eventually he broke out of that and he he plays really well. But um, Tommy Lloyd said after the game, like, look, like we got to get to a point where Kylan's comfortable shooting the ball when a few of them don't go in. And, you know, when, when his shot, he had games where he had zeros across the board. Uh, he would be like 0 for 2, and then he would just mentally disappear from the game. And, you know, that's something that the, the coaching staff really worked on him with. And I, I think it, it his talent is there. I, I don't have any question that Kylan's talent is there. The problem is um, when he struggles, it's, it's all mental, in, in my opinion. He'll take himself out of the game mentally. He won't want the ball as much. But when he's on and shooting well, he's just a completely different player. Jason, obviously a five-star point guard coming out of high school. Did play with other guards at Arizona. I think that can be a, a good thing when you have that luxury. But uh, as you look at it from his future as a, a point guard, do you think he is that ball in the hand, most of the time playmaker? Is it is some is his strength being able to play off the ball as a spot up as well? If you have maybe another ball handler, I like him as a point guard. But you know, Arizona. They didn't really push Kylan out. Uh, they were they were ready to go forward with a Jaden Bradley, Kylan Boswell backcourt. Uh, basically, you have, yeah, Kylan's at the two, but he's a point guard if necessary. It's kind of whoever brings the ball up and, and things like that. They were prepared to run it that way. Um, you know, I, I think he's more of a point guard, but I do wonder if he would succeed more off the ball because there's less pressure in, in that situation. Um, where he could kind of just be himself and say, look, you know, he could shoot. He's a good shooter. So it's like, okay, you don't have the pressure of bringing the ball up and all that. Go out, get open, get your jumpers and things like that, and go score as opposed to having that pressure of running the entire offense. I, I do – a part of me does wonder if he would be more successful in that role. What did you see from him defensively? It seems like a guy that obviously can be physical at the point of attack. Does he need to lean up maybe a little bit? Is Was quickness an issue at all for him? And does seem like his metrics were pretty uh, pretty decent at the defensive end. Yeah, that's just his body. You know, like he's had the same body since high school, and that was a big concern. And and most guys with that body, you would look and go, "Ooh, I don't, I don't know about that." But he he's dealt with it pretty well. He's not a bad defender. I mean, I don't think he's elite or anything like that, but he's not going to cost you uh, defensively at all. He, he's a solid defender. Um, you know, he could play passing lanes pretty well. He, he's not going to lock down the opposition's best player, but Arizona didn't really have to cover for him defensively at all. Uh, he, he was fine in that regard. Jason, you said Arizona didn't push him out. That means they felt this could be a really good player for them the next year or two. What are his next steps? Like, what do you think his ceiling can be as a player with two years of eligibility remaining? So, you know, the thing with Kylan is everyone, well, I should say, but most people like, like he's a great kid. Um, he had a lot of off the court distractions that were kind of, self-imposed like he did some things off the court that he probably should have done nothing bad you know it's 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 something that most 18 year olds in college do um but he, he kind of hinted at it in his in his message online where he said like he kind of needs to you know like get focused again and, and he said in the locker room after the tournament game where he said i have to go back to tucson talk to tommy lloyd and and get refocused and figure out my preparation and all that he has to he has to decide how important basketball is to him versus the other things. If he makes that dedication to basketball and, and gets rid or, or lessens the other things that he enjoys to do, he's going to be good. Like he really is. I, I, I don't think 
he's a bad player. I don't think he's a lost cause by any means, but he has to mature and he has to become more focused on basketball. And if he does that, there's no reason why he shouldn't be a really good guard uh, for Illinois. What's his loss mean to Arizona? Uh, we'll see, <laughs> you know, like Jaden Bradley is, is going to play point. That was always going to happen. Uh, Ari there's a legit chance that Arizona gets Caleb love back. Um, had Caleb love came back, Kylan's coming off the bench. And, and I think that part of that is why he kind of looked elsewhere. Um, you know, it, it's something where Tommy Lloyd doesn't give up on guys. He doesn't really push guys out or anything like that. So, um, you know, I, I think that Arizona would have tried to find a way to make it work, but at the same time, it's a way for Arizona, um, if you know, whether Caleb comes or not, uh, to kind of bring in some new blood and, and give some guys an, an opportunity that maybe didn't have as big of an opportunity last season. Jason, you may not know this, but you got a chance to get to know him and probably his family. Going back now to Champaign, where he is going to have a lot of family around him, do you think that could be a an asset for him? How do you think that that will – there's going to be a big spotlight when you're a hometown guy. I'm sure you guys have probably dealt with that through your years of, of covering Arizona. Yeah, but I think it helps in his regard. Because like I said, like he having family around to kind of redirect him when he's not necessarily doing things he should be doing, like, you know, it, it, I think it's a good thing. Now, there's a lot of pressure. I do wonder about that aspect of, look, like there's been times at Arizona, you know, Tommy Lloyd came out and said, look, but you're the point guard at Arizona. There's pressure, there's criticism, and, and Kylan needs to find a way to deal with it. And, and I think that is an obstacle for him. Uh, you know, Brad Underwood is going to have to work with him on being able to handle the criticism and, and all that. But um, I think it's good that there's family around him to kind of redirect him and maybe get his confidence up when things aren't going so well. Jason Shear, wildcatauthority.com, covers Arizona and does it really, really well. Jason, I know you got uh, some stuff to do covering Arizona, so we really appreciate your time, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. All right, great stuff there, Derek. Uh, from from Jason, some good insight that I thought was I thought encouraging because I kind of know that that there's some maturity needed to do. But as he said, Tommy didn't push him out, and they were kind of thinking he could be the starting guard this year alongside Jaden Bradley. That's for a really good Arizona pro program. And as you said, if if it wasn't Illinois, there were plenty of other really really good high major programs wanting Kylan Boswell. Yeah, I mean, if they wanted to be full on out on him, they could have benched him. He still started all those games. They could have played Bradley and Love and and, and buried Kylan, obviously. And it did sound like that there it took a while for Kylan to ultimately enter the portal. It seemed like, based on what I had heard and seen some of what Jason had reported, there was multiple meetings with Tommy Lloyd, and uh, that one was up in the air for a little bit. So uh, if they wanted to – I think it seemed like Kreza, that break was more – clear and and wanted by Arizona and and like he said they pretty much told him that it, they were handing the keys to Kyle and, and and that was that but I like the fact that Arizona was, had interest in keeping him probably even as a, as a starter was we would have had to see what that looked like if if Love doesn't in fact return but uh and then yeah on, on top of that the fact that a lot of other big time programs saw the talent saw the age probably too and said hey I mean it, some maturing is probably going to be necessary for anybody that is in our program that's 18 and 19 years old so it is way too early um so take this with a grain of salt but right now illinois has the number one transfer class in the country it's partly because they have three guys and not a lot of schools have three guys but it's also because they have two really good ones and, and trey white and kylan boswell here Derek. and we know they're going to add more so i think illinois is destined for a top 10 transfer class in, in this recruiting class and right now, should we call Brad Underwood the king of the transfer portal in the Big Ten at the very least? Like, has anyone done it better? Like, I, I went back and looked, and he has three straight top five transfer classes in the Big Ten. And the one that wasn't number one in the Big Ten uh, was with Marcus Damas, Quincy Garrier, and Justin Harmon. That was number five. No transfer class was as good in the Big Ten as Illinois last year based on impact. Nebraska's, I, I think, was really close with uh, Rink Mast. Um, John Bryce and uh, a couple of the other guys, but like Illinois was, was the best transfer class in, in the, the big 10 last year. And now they're off to this start. And here's another one development. Like Illinois has had five transfers. If you combine it all earn all big 10, four guys that earn five, all big 10 honors. The next closest is Penn state with two. So like they are developing, getting talent from the transfer portal. So you put all that together 
Like Brad Underwood is leaning heavily into this, and we've kind of mentioned it. It's a little ruthless when you over recruit some of your prep guys. And I know for a, a lot of Illinois fans, like they don't like seeing sincere Harris leave. They don't like seeing these players as freshmen that they get to know potentially leaving early. But it's worked for Illinois so far. There's no guarantee it works again. Ohio State and Indiana have not had a lot of success, success despite the success on transfer portal rankings. Uh, it has not led to NCAA tournament appearances for them. So uh, he has leaned completely into this. I, I just think the year where they got Jaden Epps and Sky Clark and rolled with them at point guard, I think that just made them go, okay, we're, we're going with age here. We're, we're going to keep going to the portal. Because that year, what got them to the tournament was Matthew Meyer and Terrence Shannon Jr. So uh, I, I think he's – you're going to get a couple of preps each year, Derek, but I, I think the transfer portal is the way for Brad Underwood. I fully agree with all that. Yeah, he's definitely in the Big Ten. I think he's at the top of the mountain for sure. I mean, he's on a short list nationally in terms of wanting to build through the portal a lot. Not to say that they're going to totally neglect high school. A guy like Marez Johnson is still mattering a lot to – their future and, and will for sure dabble in high school recruiting the no brainers in the state and uh, you know, make takes that they maybe even long-term guys uh, that they would have uh, been interested in and in, in keeping in their program. But yeah, I mean, the play, the payoff's been fantastic. I think we've talked about it a ton. It was a huge reason why last year worked because they not only got some talented guys, but guys that fit. And, and that was something that was so huge as far as, identifying just the way the mental makeup of guys, how are they were going to come in, what they were about, were they about winning? Could they uh, be selfless? And and that really worked. And yes, the development too, because Terrence Shannon was not this player, obviously at Texas tech, not even close. Um, Alfonso Plummer probably on paper had as good of a year uh, as he's probably ever had when he came in. So, and then Marcus Tabas was even better at Illinois in the big 10 than he was in the Valley uh, at Southern Illinois. So that's all, that's all big feathers in his cap and, and should only provide him with more ammo going back into the portal. Like he's, I know some of these guys are already kind of proven like Alfonso Plummer, but he got the best year out of Alfonso yeah. Plummer on the most and you know, most successful team that Alfonso Plummer had ever been on Quincy Garrier. Same thing. Like Quincy had been a good player, but this was you know up there with his sophomore year at Syracuse for how good uh, he had played. And, I, I know Matthew Meyer was on a national championship team, kind of a sixth man was probably more efficient for six to six to eight weeks. Matthew Meyer played the best basketball of his life with, with Illinois and, and maybe helped them get to the, the G league like he has. So uh, th that track record is certainly paying off for them. And, and, you know, Tim Anderson's connected to dudes, right? They've gotten, they've had connections to dudes. And then Brad Underwood this past year, Derek, I think really picked out the right people. Um, and that's going to be important continuing going forward, whether it's Colin Boswell or Booth or, or Maddox, or if AJ store is the guy they want or not, like a lot of that's probably gonna have to do with one, the money and two, the, the person, like, is he going to be able to fit what they want to do and help them win basketball games? Cause at the end of the day, you can get all the talent in the world. You still got to win. Like Eric Musselman's had success with that. And last year did not go very well for him. I, I would kind of call him maybe the king of the transfer portal in college basketball the last couple of years. So that delicate balance between talent and fit, um, Brad Under was able to strike it last year. Let's see if he can do it again this year because they have to. They have to. And even as they're recruiting guys that need to play huge roles and you got to recruit stars, at least one of them, and Kylan's got the ability to, to be one if he plays up to his potential, that it, it's not just talent that they're evaluating. They definitely character, uh, motivation, and, and all those things. It's – a very active conversation and evaluation as they're going through that. And um, flat out, I think it could deter them from taking somebody that may not be in line with, with what they want, maybe too thoughtful as, as far as just making money or uh, trying to get their own, trying to just solely be about their stock or, or what have you not to say that those aren't fair things to want. Like when your market value is high and you have a chance to earn money, you have a chance to develop yourself for the NBA, but you got to be, uh, about winning, willing to acclimate into a team. They, they're they very much talking about that constantly, evaluating that. And obviously they they crushed that last year, uh, crushed it in terms of getting guys that fit and played really well together, gelled really well together. But, yeah, I mean, back to the, the Sky and Jaden, and that team was really young outside of Terrence and Matt. And I, Brad definitely evaluate why am I – 
why am I relying on freshmen when there's still so many 22 and 23 year olds in college basketball? And uh, yes, it's going to hurt some of the the players that you recruited in as high school talent, and maybe they'll they'll be one and dons, two and dons uh, as far as looking for a different destination. But I, I would counter with you know big time programs have done this for a long time, haven't necessarily worried about one individual player, what they're going to think or how their feelings are going to be. They're just trying to load up every year and continue to turn in talent and uh, let the best players play. And, and then the rest work itself out. I do think it's important to have a couple of guys who glue it all together throughout the years. Yeah. So yeah. like, I really want Luke Goody to stay. I really want Ty Rogers to stay. I, I'd love to see Dre Gibbs Allhorn stay and be the backup to Dante Maddox and Colin Boswell for a year and then take over like, in a huge role the next year. I understand though, if guys don't have patience for that, uh, if they're not guaranteed certain things, because they can be guaranteed it at their next school, see Jaden Epps. I, I thought Jaden Epps could have been one of those kind of players, but he got something else somewhere else, and I, I don't blame him. He averaged, what, 15 points a game this year, more than that. Um, whereas Johnson, I, I think, would be really important. I think it's why you see Illinois taking a guy like Jason Jackstis, who they can develop and see in two or three years. If that can be our stretch big guy instead of having to go to a portal for it, and you know he's an in-state kid with patience that's committed to the process. Um, those guys are probably going to be pretty rare, though, but I, I would like a base of three or four guys that they can keep around every year. Like, I would love to see Imani Hansberry stick around, but if Chester Frazier is leaving and they're recruiting big guys, I couldn't blame that guy if he wants to move on and look elsewhere, Derek. That's just – it cuts both ways. For sure. Yeah. No, and there was a situation where maybe Sincere was a guy that if he was committed to playing whatever role he was going to have and if the jump shot was going to come along, they they probably would have been OK if he bought into and said, hey, you know, if I'm all right being a bench piece, if that's what my game says I should be, then they're probably fine with him sticking around. But I do think that his desire was to be more of a a guy for sure in the rotation. And, and yeah, I'm with you on Amani as well. Uh, I think I do think that. My expectation is that he's going to leave. Is that he going to go in the portal as primary recruiter has gone and uh, they're going after Kerry Booth and sounds like they'll have a decent amount of interest in a five uh, or at least another big a as well. So uh, that's Illinois' choice to to make that call. And, and look, you could have another – the odds of uh, another Brandon Podjemski, although it's, that one seems so rare, of a guy not playing and then going to be in a first-round draft pick in a year. I, I don't know if we'll ever see that again, but having someone really – thrive at a different place there might be a regret that you have by well can, not... can i bring this up like if amani left we know notre dame would be very interested in them because uh -huh. micah shrewsbury really 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 wanted amani hansberry and they were in a good spot until illinois came along the bigger fish came along we will be grading that trade right it's basically a basketball trade of gary booth for amani hansberry if that were to happen we'd be paying attention to that and I, I think Amani would have a chance to win that at the end of the day because I think he's a really good player, but they're very different players. So, yeah, like th there's no guarantee it all pays off, but the staff has definitely earned trust um, with, with what they've done the last several years. Yeah, yeah, and outside of pods to this point, I mean, RJ, you weren't left wishing he was on Illinois' roster based on what he did at Georgia. Sky Clark was okay at Louisville, a bad Louisville team. Jaden Epps took a million shots at, at Georgetown. It just wasn't going to be the reality for him at Illinois. So there, there have been a number of examples of guys. I mean, Andre Curbelo, uh, multiple different bounce around, St. John, Miller Miss, Adam Miller, another one. Yeah, so really outside of, of Podjemski going to Santa Clara and, and killing it, there haven't been any that you have really deeply regretted. So I – and look, it, it could be a situation where it will work out for both sides. Like a, a guy like Amani could go and get a bigger role and, and really have a nice career. Illinois could get Kerry Booth and maybe have more of a natural fit with Merez Johnson or have, have more of a natural fit as far as what they want their offense, a more proven shooter on the perimeter. Uh, I know Amani's got a little bit of an ability to, to shoot it, but uh, that's more of Kerry's strength where Amani's kind of more of a tweener between a four and a five. Obviously does bring more physicality than what, Kerry Booth would. All right. To wrap this up, Derek, let's get back to the Chester Frazier conversation. Just to, to reiterate, there's nothing official yet. We're just kind of waiting on West Virginia, but this is fully expected to happen. It is going to happen. The Chester Frazier is going to be leaving this Illinois staff. And, and from what we hear, Derek, like this is kind of expected. Like this was um, kind of a mutual kind of thing moving on. I, I think the philosophies 
of being this transfer portal heavy team? Like, does it align with what Chester is and wants and his guys sincere now gone Jaden now gone. Will Amani stay. Um, those guys just haven't worked out for Illinois for one reason or another. And the Illinois is going very offensive centric here. Like they, they're going to a offensive team and, what is Chester? Chester's a try hard develop kind of guy. So I can see why it wouldn't work out, but that would, that would leave an open spot for Brad Underwood for the first time in three years. Derek, remember that off season of Steven Gentry and Orlando Antigua and Shin Coleman all leaving. That would leave an open spot for Illinois that I think would be one of the most desired assistant coaching spots in the country. And I'm not being hyperbolic there. Uh, because Illinois has success now to sell more so than three years ago. And they have the, some of the most financial backing in college basketball with Josh Whitman and Brad Underwood at the helm. Like they are going full bore into this to make it a national contender. And that is why my first phone call would be to Orlando Antigua. Come back, come back. Like what, what's is Cal working out? Like did that work out for you the last three years? Uh, do you want to go somewhere, somewhere different? Uh, somewhere where the ba- financial backing is there, the success is there with somebody that you're very familiar with. Because we know Josh Whitman was willing to pay pretty much as much as Kentucky was. And Kentucky, from what I understand, paid him $1.4 million last year. I can see it happening, and I can see both sides having a lot of interest in that. So while Chester Frazier leaving would be disappointing, I think somebody like Antigua is gettable for Illinois. That would be an absolute bombshell get. Like that – Orlando is legit one of the the best assistants in college basketball, in my opinion. When you he's think about, like it. <laughs> he's paid like it. Yeah, he he might be he might be the top the, the top assistant as far as compensation at one point four. He's he's obviously in a, a very elite tier, if not that that number one guy. But uh, as far as his ability to get talent with his connections, uh, you're talking about Kofi Coburn, obviously, you're talking about ability to get Andres Feliz and. Uh, Andre Carballo, the, the good version, uh, the the one that helps you uh, get the the one seed and whatnot. But I would imagine he'd be a, a really good asset in the portal. I had this thought this morning, like if this does happen, what better timing as far as having Marais Johnson working with him and then Adam Fletcher like that, that, that couldn't be a better pairing uh, for a guy that was a, a borderline five star. So there, there's always a, a shoot your shot guy uh, in terms of any list as far as uh, coaching hot board or you know, even if you're an AD, like who who you're going to go to if, if your coach gets fired or he leaves. And Antigua should definitely be that guy. Uh, it does seem like, and I'll admit, I, I didn't think that it, it would last a whole lot, very long in terms of maybe conversations or his name, uh, that it might just be an easy, oh, well, I love my time at Illinois, but uh, it might not happen. But I, I think that with Cal going to Arkansas, like there, there was – a lot of reasons to go to Lexington for him. Like his family was very well entrenched there. I know his wife loved it there. His daughter was going to school there. So beyond just his, his guy saying, Hey, I'm in, I'm a little bit in peril with my program. Come back and, and join me and let's, let's elevate this thing back up. There, there's less of a pull, I think, to Arkansas uh, now that, that Cal has made that move. So maybe it, the door is open for Illinois to go and make it happen. And go, circling back to 21 when he left, I think, Based on what I'd heard, that Illinois had the highest offer on the table to him at the very end of the day. I think that he took like a million to go to Kentucky. I think Illinois was going to top whatever they had to to keep him. Ultimately, he made that move to to go to go back to Lexington. But why not shoot your shot on that thing? That would be just enormous. Well, and you and I think Illinois is going to find another big man in the portal to go along with Merez Johnson. Why would they be waiting, Derek? Why would they be doing that? <laughs> doing my wind horse there uh no i just shoot your shot and uh, i i think there would be mutual interest so don't know if it's gonna happen i know it was reported by matt norlander cbs who's really tied in that he's following him chin coleman's following him to arkansas um but it still hasn't been announced yet just like the chester thing hasn't been announced yet so just something to watch there i think they would have had a lot of interest in mike boynton who ended up at, at michigan the former oklahoma state head coach uh, but uh, he's he's all signed, sealed, and delivered from what I understand in Michigan. I don't know if Michigan's announced it yet, but uh, Mike has tweeted out about it. Uh, Mike was the assistant coach for Brad Underwood at Stephen F. Austin and Oklahoma State, so there was connections there. Speaking of that, Eric Pastrana at Georgia uh, has been at Florida and Oklahoma State, was with Brad for all three years at Stephen F. Austin, so that's a guy with with connections, with proven high major interest. Uh, Matt Figger, uh, former 
Texas Rio Grande Valley head coach, uh, was an assistant coach of Brad at Kansas State, I believe South Carolina for a year. So he's available. Um, th- there's some other names that we can put out eventually when West Virginia decides to announce this, Derek. But I think this is going to be a very desirable job, and Illinois is going to get a pretty proven name here. Yeah, you're coming off an Elite Eight. Like you said, you got the financial backing to to go out and make a splash higher. It should be a very attractive destination uh, because Illinois has consistently been a player at the top of the Big Ten. Uh, to have a decent chunk of NIL to go out and recruit in the portal as well. So uh, I think that this will be one where Illinois possibly upgrades. Uh, by I, I have a lot of respect for Chester. Uh, I think that he's a good coach. I, I think that just the fit uh, didn't ultimately play out the best in terms of, I think Chester likes the development, like you talked about, likes going into high school and and making those splashes. Not to say that he, he can't go in the portal and, and use some relationships. It's just a different, it's a different uh, transaction or a different way of, of building up a, a, a get because it's a little bit longer term in high school uh, and the portal it's, it's quick speed dating. It's, it's, it's that way about it. So I, I think that Chester had some frustrations with guys getting recruited over. I think defensively maybe would have liked to do some different things uh, a little bit more aggressive in terms of pressure. I'm not saying that, uh, DeVries is bringing back Press Virginia uh, there in, in Morgantown. But, yeah, I think that this could work out for both both sides. And if Illinois does get a big splash splash landing like an Antigua or even uh, Pastrana, that would be a, a huge deal for Illinois for sure. Uh, Rick, $10 Super Chat. Thank you, Rick. How would you rate Boswell's hustle, heart, and defense as compared to Sincere Harris? Uh, I've watched a, a ton of Kyle Boswell's defensive cutups, Derek. I mean, Sincere is is another level when it comes to that kind of stuff. The length as well, um, springiness. But talk about offense to defense. This is like a B plus to A player compared to a, a D player offensively. Right. Yeah. I admittedly I need to watch some more uh, of Kylan as well, Arizona game tape. But in talking to some people, it, it just sounds like Kylan is for sure a, a very competitive guy at the defensive end, but Sincere's probably a different level. I mean, they, they called him Mr. 94 feet for a reason. And, yeah, just a little bit more rangy as an athlete, I think, uh, than, than Kylan is. Now, he's he's got the strength to him for sure. But, I mean, Sincere as a, as a freshman, now albeit an old freshman, was was game-wrecking some some big big games. You know, Northwestern yeah. at home with Boo Booey and UCLA and contributing to that comeback against Texas. So, I wouldn't put Kylan in the same realm probably as, as sincere defensively. I think Kylan can be a good defender and a physical one on the ball, but uh, obviously offensively it's it's not even close. Sincere could change games. Like we saw that, right? Like just, just effort, energy, intensity. Like he changed some of those big comebacks, but also there are games you can't play him, right? right? Like, like that's – if you can get a 30-minute a game point guard, like there's, there's a lot more value when it comes to that. I would Show- say – I will say Kylan was known as, and even you can read his scouting report on 24-7, his high school profile, known as one of the better on-ball defenders in that class in 2022. So he he had that reputation. I do think, like Jason was saying, I, I've asked the question because I've wondered about it. I've heard like they want to trim him up a little bit if lateral quickness or just having that big body can sometimes be a detriment to, to staying in front of some quicker guys. And I know steals is just one stat. You, you could just, you know, gamble and get a bunch of steals, but he did average 1.4 steals a game. So it's not like this guy's not very good defensively. Right. Sean, what's the status of AJ store taking bids? Is that what his recruitment is at this point? He's got a lot of leverage. Yeah. Uh, negotiating at, at this point, I think that the store side's doing a lot of the talking right now, um, which they can, and it's just seeing what they can, can get in terms of what the NIL packages look like. And he still says, as far as what I know, that he wants to go through the NBA draft process. I don't know how real the threat is of him just saying I'm going and staying in the draft because right now he's not on mock drafts. I do think he'd be worth a pick. I mean, look at that athleticism and, and the scoring that he did this past year. Uh, if he was a second-round pick, now you you flirt with whether you're not going to get guaranteed money or not and maybe you even get as much guaranteed money to, to stay in college through NIL. So uh, I think it's – going to take a while for this thing to play out. And uh, I think from Illinois standpoint, they're, they've been working it. Like they've been involved with it, but uh, I, I do think there are some really high asks right now. I think that the, 
they've been aggressive and, and trying to see what they can get. And I, I think Illinois has pushed back a little bit. And I, I'll be curious if there is somebody desperate enough and with big enough, uh, deep enough pockets who might just say, hey, we'll we'll do what it takes to get a guy that could be a star in college basketball next year. Not a ton of guys that are proven stars. Uh, so, hey, he's got leverage. See if he overplays it or not or if his camp – I should say overplays it or not, but I get I get why they're doing it with the, the money that is being thrown around here. But if you're Illinois, you also got to have other options here. St. Dominic, what's up, Dom? What happened with Jace Butler? Why did he decommit? I would imagine their transfer portal activity and Chester Frazier or something to do with that, Derek. I think those are the two factors. It was said to me right after it happened that, yeah, it's about Illinois recruiting over guys and you know the idea of a, a year one role, but seemingly, surely underneath the surface, and I tried to dig that out because there was talk about it, an assistant change and Chester was the obvious one. If there was going to be one, was this, you know, what was it? It couldn't have been coincidental, but was it something that was about to happen? And I, I couldn't get that from anybody. I couldn't get anybody to say, hey, yeah, Chester's leaving. So Jace is out. But I think in hindsight, that does seem like it was probably known at the time of him decommitting. And I'm assuming that contributed to it. Yeah, I think that's about it, Derek. Uh, I think we covered all the angles here. But uh, as we know, this is a very fluid situation throughout this offseason. I, I think most people have fun with this, but uh, can can tug with your emotions here. If a guy you love leaves and goes to the portal, like Sincere Harris and Dane Danger, two really fan favorites here. But then it's also exciting when you're adding guys like Trey White, Kyle and Boswell. We're talking about Kerry Booth, the AJ Stores, Dante Maddox's of the world. Uh, just buckle up. Continue to have that buckle on through the rest of this month. For sure. Yeah, I mean, in, in pro sports, you get the free agency, and that's always a really exciting wave of, of guys moving and your teams, especially like rebuilding with the Bears. you got the draft and free agency uh, that you can be excited about it. So this has added that dynamic to where – Puts a lot more work on our plates and also uh, even more so on the, the staffs who are working this plates. But I think from a fan standpoint, yes, it can be frustrating to see guys. I'm sure there are sincere Harris jerseys out there. I always saw those, uh, you know, smattered around there um, at the Safe Farm Center, even on the road. I saw something on Twitter that I should not be – believing on, on just first glance i should never believe anything on the first glance oh, but like dane danger was one of the highest selling jerseys of march madness i believe i saw I that, see that come out yeah <laughs> so you're gonna have attachments to to players or it might just be harder for that to happen for people to let themselves really dive in and and become a full-on fan of a certain guy uh which is unfortunate but it does present a lot of exciting opportunities and just be excited that i think if you're a fan that Illinois is dabbling like they are full on head first into this versus a program. Maybe, you know, what, what's Matt Painter going to do trying to replace Zach Eady? Is he going to stay stubborn and say, I'm not going to be a, a portal builder. Tom Izzo's had that. I would just, if I was an Illinois fan, be excited that every year Brad's trying to, to build a very, very competitive roster, a team that can go on a deep run and they're in the middle of trying to do that again. What was the last Jersey you really regretted buying Derek? Oh man, my brother had a bad run. Anybody that he bought, they then <laughs> got traded, or I think he got a Brandon Marshall Bears one. I think I got a Cutler, but you know, I I, I, I I got a Cutler white one. I love the white Bears jerseys. So when he when they traded for him, I bought because I knew at least he'd be here for like five years. I don't have any regrets because there's still like an ironic thing about wearing a Jay yeah. Cutler jersey that like I think you can pull it off. Um, I, I didn't buy Justin. Uh, I'm thinking about. I know, man. I'm glad I didn't. Should I buy Caleb right away? Should I do that? Because I think the last White Sox jersey I got, I didn't buy it. Someone gave it, gave it to me. Was Yohan Moncada? So that didn't work out too well for me either. I'd say my my biggest regret uh, that comes to mind: Anthony Thomas for the Bears. A train. Mm -hmm. My dad bought me one when we went to a game, and I, I don't think he was on the team like three years later. So um, yeah, those are tough. Usually now I just try to go back. Like if I got a a white Sox jersey be like mark burley or frank thomas just go with one of the classics uh just go with one of those rather than somebody like if you're an illinois fan you just go back and get io to or kofi coburn or something that like will that. never age poorly no 
That's right. All right. For Derek Piper, I'm Jeremy Warner. Thank you to the 600 plus of you on a Monday afternoon joining us live on the podcast. Give us a like uh, on those YouTube channels. Uh, subscribe to us. Hit the notifications bell as well. If you're listening on the podcast, give us a follow rating review. We appreciate when you guys do that. Thanks to Jason Shear from Wildcat Authority from Arizona for giving us some insight on Colin Boswell. We got a ton on the site right now with all that is happening with Illinois basketball. You want to check out the VIP side of things. Derek with his Dante Maddox official visit primer. I got my seven thoughts for the week. We got plenty of stuff on the board and a lot of football stuff coming with Pro Day, uh, the spring game, and a couple official visits as well. So we are loaded at Alana Inquirer. Everybody have a great day. Take care of each other. We'll talk to you next time right here on the Alana Inquirer podcast.